Hey everyone, welcome back. In this final video for topic six in our database class, part 14, I'm going to discuss distributed database processing. Let's get started. So our last topic for database administration then is going to be distributed database processing. And uh, this is something that database administrators of large databases will have to contemplate. And uh, the idea here is that we can spread a database around across multiple machines. So this comes in a couple of different formats. One would be that we could have, say, exact copies of the database on multiple machines as a, a way of doing something like load balancing for web requests or instantaneous recovery in the case of failure. So we can do these copies of exact copies of the database, like mirror copies that live on different machines, maybe even in different geographic areas. And that would be replication as listed here on this slide. So that's replication. But uh, we can also partition our database. That is where we can take part of the database and store it on one machine. And we can take another part of the database and store it on a second machine and so on and so on up to as many machines as we may need. So in this case, maybe we decide to, I don't know, uh, store, if we're say a multinational organization and we have offices in, I don't know, Tokyo and Los Angeles and say London, well, maybe it would be a good idea for us to store our local customers information in an area that is geographically close to where those customers uh, live and work. And uh, in so doing, we can improve query performance, right? So in that case, maybe I keep my European customers in my London partition for my database. And I keep my North American customers in my Los Angeles partition. And I keep my customers in Asia in my Tokyo partition. So in this case, we're dividing the database across several different machines. But the point is it's still all just one database, right? So conceptually it's one database. It's just that different parts of it live in different places. And we can have kind of a mixture of these things as well. So we can have a, something that's both partitioned and replicated. Right. So let's take a look at some graphical examples. And hopefully this will help us to understand these partitioning and replication concepts for distributed database processing. That'll be it. So we'll start here in the upper left which is the simplest model. And this is the model that uh, we've typically been working with throughout our time together this semester, wherein we have our entire database installed on a single database server. So it could be on your computer at home, could be on one of the virtual machines that you use to access the database. But the point is that it all just lives on one physical machine. Okay? So if these are some tables, right? Tables W, X, Y, and Z, or Z, if you learned British English, they're just all living on one machine, right? So we've got our database management system on top of our operating system on that machine. And maybe we have some application programs, so AP one and two that to also live on that machine. And it's fine, right? A very simple design, single processing, non-partitioned, non-replicated design. All right. So that's uh, one approach. Next approach is down here in the lower left. And uh, this one shows a partitioned design in which one part of the database is stored on computer or one database server. And another part of the database is stored on another computer or another server. Right? So maybe we here we have tables W and X stored on machine number one. And then we have tables Y and Z stored on machine number two. And so in this case, we've divided the database across two different physical computers, and you'll see that there's a communications line that interconnects them. So in this way, we can treat this partition database still as just one conceptually, it's still one database, even though it's spread across multiple machines. And of course, this communication line now these days typically would be the internet. So some kind of TCP IP based connection. And these computers could be sitting right next to each other in a data center, or then one of them could be in Beijing and another one could be in Sydney, Australia. So it doesn't matter. Point is that 
they are two separate machines and they, it doesn't matter how far apart they are. They're just interconnected with some kind of communications network, right? So that's the partitioned, but non-replicated alternative. In this case, it's a pure partition because we just divide the data and we store part of the data in one place and the other part of the data somewhere else. And although here we're just dealing with a very simple two computer depiction do remember that just scale that out in your minds, right? It could be two computers. It could be 10, it could be a thousand, right? So the same principle applies. It's just here. We're illustrating it with two separate machines. All right, let's take a look at our third design. And that is shown up here in the upper right. And this is a non-partitioned, but replicated design. So in this case, what we're doing is we are keeping two exact copies of our database tables w x y and z that comprises the entire database and we're doing that on two separate machines so you'll see here we have a copy number two and copy number one these are mirror images of each other right so we can do this for a number of reasons but you'll notice again it just lives on two different computers or three or ten or a thousand it doesn't matter and they're just interconnected with communications lines so in this case, you can, why would we do this? Well, maybe we want to do it as a backup, right? So if maybe computer number one is our primary workhorse, the one that handles most of the actual operational stuff. And anytime a change is made there, that change is propagated across the communication line down to computer number two, where, you know, an identical change is made to the second copy of the database. So in this case, uh, maybe if we have some kind of crash or catastrophe or earthquake or something happened here, we have an exact copy of the database that is up and running that perhaps could take over the responsibility from the first one immediately. So we don't have any downtime for our company or our customers. That's one conceivable reason why we might want to do this. Another would be like load balancing. This is done very often with cloud types of designs. The idea is using like a web example that if I achieve a certain level of traffic, it's not really going to be feasible to provide a good level of service, like a good web experience for all of my web users, just by using a single physical machine. So in that case, maybe we decide to do some replicated databases like this and we can use it for load balancing. So maybe every other request goes to computer. So new requests are coming in. We send a Request number one to computer one, request number two, as it comes into computer two, request number three to computer one, request number four to computer two, and so on. Right. And in that way, we can essentially achieve a higher level of performance because each computer would be responsible for handling only half of the total amount of web traffic. And again, feel free to scale this out in your minds. So maybe we have 10 web servers or a hundred web servers or a thousand, depending on our particular needs. We could do it that way. Okay. And then of course, so we have the hybrid design, which is illustrated down here in the lower right. So this is a partitioned replicated alternative where we are replicating or storing a copy of some of our data on multiple machines. In this case, that would be table Y. Right? So we have an exact copy of table Y here on both of these database servers. Maybe it's particularly important or valuable data. Right. Uh, but we also have a partition going on here where we have some data that are stored only on computer number one and other data, in this case, table Z, that is stored only on computer number two. Okay. So this design here combines both partitioning and replication and serve an organization that has those kinds of needs. So these are basically our four different designs for distributed database processing. You can go from essentially not having any distributed database processing to any combination of these other three, right? To partitioned, but non-replicated, replicated, but non-partitioned, non or a mix of partitioned and replicated.